Welcome to This Is Getting Old, Moving Towards an Age-Friendly World. I'm your host, Melissa Batchelor, and today I'm going to be talking to you about marketing to the new consumer majority. So most people know that 10,000 boomers today are turning 65, and by 2029, all boomers are going to be 65 or older, and that milestone is just seven years away. And when I talk about older adults, most people think that I'm talking about the baby boomers. And while historically, the boomers have always been the largest generation in the U.S., that changed two years ago when the millennials became the largest generation. And they started turning 40 two years ago, which, by the way, makes them old enough to sue for age discrimination in the workplace. So the reason that marketers need to be aware of this is because there are now more adults over the age of 40 than children under the age of 18 for the first time in human history. They are, in fact, the new consumer majority. Also, adults age 50 and over control 70% of America's household disposable income, and they spend 51 cents on every dollar. But by 2050, they're going to be spending 61 cents per dollar. So in total, this group um, is projected to spend $84 billion annually just on tech products by 2023, and they're projected to contribute 26, over $26 trillion to the U.S. economy by 2050. So these statistics speak to the spending power that marketers may not be fully tapping into. So business as usual is going to need to change, and today I'm going to talk about some different ways to do that. And you may have noticed that the baby boomers are leading the way in reinventing the concept of older age. The problem is that most current media and marketing strategies aren't keeping up. Most portrayals of this group, either their images aren't included or the messages are not around healthy aging or aging well, which most of the uh, Americans over the age of 40 are doing. Um, the majority of older adults are living at home, they're managing their own lives and they're not dependent on others. What the media shows is often very negative portrayals of growing old, basically equating aging with decline rather than healthy aging or aging well. So these negative stereotypes continue in media portrayals and this is largely due to pervasive ageism in American culture. Now, some industries did take an interest in older adults um, very early. These include financial services, retirement housing and healthcare, but all industries need to pay attention to the 40 plus if they want to maximize revenue. In the majority of national DEI conversations about all the different isms, ageism is usually the one that's most often left out, and it's a blind spot for a lot of people. Additionally, your beliefs about aging, whether those are positive or negative, are they can be a form of implicit bias that's often not acknowledged in any industry. So what is ageism? It can be hard to recognize until you start to look for it, and then you'll probably see it everywhere like I do. So ageism are, is about the stereotypes, prejudice, and discrimination that happen based on someone's age. And it can happen if you're young or old. And ageism can be institutional, it can be interpersonal, and it can be self-directed. And ageist beliefs can actually impact the marketing um, teams, the strategies that they use, particularly when most marketing teams are often under the age of 40 themselves. The average age of any marketing team is around 38. But that team's belief can have an impact on what language is used and what tagline wording is used. And uh, they could influence what images are used. Are they, do they use positive or negative images or videos? Um, how are they actually portraying uh, older adults? So actually AARP did a study um, that found that while adults 50 and over make up 46% of the U.S. population now, they actually only account for about 15% of images that are used containing adults. Ageism is so pervasive in our culture that 82% of older adults experience ageism in their everyday lives, and 65% of that is around messaging and their interactions with other people. As a marketing team, your messaging matters, and so being aware of ageism is going to help, to help you to effectively develop a, a marketing campaign for the new consumer majority. Information about ageism and how to develop non-ageist marketing campaigns for your largest consumer base may not be something that you've really encountered in your corporate world, but it's an important advantage to cultivate. And I don't know about you, but I love having every advantage over my competition. So marketers who learn how to translate this new concept of older age are going to have the opportunity to develop actionable advertising, promotion, public relation, and social media strategies that will have profitable results. So what should we do? Uh, first of all, older adults should not be viewed as a specific demographic. Uh, marketing to them is going to require a new kind of thinking and an alternative set of strategies. 
So anytime you market to an age demographic, it's known as age-based marketing, and it's generally exclusive. What I want to do today is make the case for ageless or age-inclusive marketing. Essentially, it's a way of marketing that includes people from all ages. So let's talk about some of the myths and misperceptions that marketers may have. Uh, maybe you think that older adults aren't streaming, that they're not engaged with social media, or that they're not gaming. Those are actually negative stereotypes that simply aren't true. When you look at the numbers, 45% of baby boomers stream TV, 56% listen to audio programming regularly. And while it's true that this group does watch more linear TV and consume more print media than other generations, they're also still spending 10 hours a week on social media. 69% use social media. In fact, 40% of Facebook users are over the age of 65, and nearly 60% of them use YouTube. And when it comes to online or mobile gaming, over 40% of um, older adults use these regularly also. In fact, they spend 10% more time every day gaming than they do on social media. I've seen this play out in my own life because even my 87-year-old grandmother has gotten into the game. She loves to play solitaire on her phone, and she even got herself a snazzy little pop button. So let's talk about a, a few other ways that advertising to older adults misses the bullseye. Um, often this happens if the messaging focuses on how the product or service will help an older adult's daily living rather than showing how it actually would enhance their life. Um, most products and subsequent ads are then created from the perspective of a caregiver or they're targeted towards the adult child of the older adult rather than the older adult they're intended to reach. Marketers need to think about universal values, experiences, and emotions of older customers that are shared with all generations. So in other words, not using so much technical um, data, but relying more on social behavioral science and marketing. So have your teams explore their own ideas about aging and determine if there's any implicit bias that, are, that could be driving the marketing plan. In other words, um, beginning to recognize ageism for what it is and focusing more on ageless marketing strategies. So when you're developing an inclusive marketing plan, you want to make sure that you're um, representing a variety of genders and races, but just don't forget about being age inclusive. So now we'll talk about some specific strategies to think about when you're marketing to the 40 plus. So rather than using othering labels like senior citizen or the elderly, use titles that reflect their life role. So grandparents, pe uh, community members, teachers, volunteers. When you use words like senior citizen and elderly, it's actually been shown to um, increase negative stereotypes by 7% compared to using role-based words and using words like older people or older adults. Make sure that your images are intergenerational. And when I say you'd focus on experiences, it's because a lot of older adults do consider themselves to be a work in progress and they're open to new experiences. Older adults want to learn new things and this should not be underestimated. Another experience strategy includes um, taking an older adult to a place that they've never been before, but they've always wanted to go. Basically checking something off their bucket list. And Investing in and marketing to the grandparent economy is another great strategy for marketers to tap into. It's no secret that a lot of grandparents dote on their grandchildren, but you may not know that it was it's actually to the tune of about $179 billion annually. 80% of, um, of grandparents say that their grandchildren are a top priority. And one example of an industry that has tapped into this, into the grandparent economy is actually the travel industry. Um, they have come up with a new term called gramping. It's a play on the word glamping, but in this case, it means grandparents and grandchildren taking bonding trips together while leaving the parents at home. And yes, you can sign me up for that. The next tip is to understand generational buying criteria. So you want to sell the product for what it will do for older adults and explain why they should want to use your product or service over the competitions. The next strategy is to design personalized consumer interactions that are easy for the customer. So you wanna make sure that your websites and your apps, anything that makes that, that requires you to click on the fine print or symbol, you're probably gonna lose a large portion of your audience. Make sure that your phones are answered um, for any questions that someone may have because good quality customer service has always been personal. The next tip is to use multi-channel marketing. So the number of older adults uh, that have smartphones is increasing. So in addition to digital marketing, use social media, print, and mailing strategies. 
You want to target the 40 plus both online and offline. The next tip is to use relatable language. So don't use a lot of teenage jargon or trendy language or internet slang. Slang. Older adults just want to know how your product or service is going to make their lives better. I actually have seen some really good ageless marketing campaigns recently. And so these companies are marketing to multiple age groups. Uh, for example, I was watching uh, Sunday Night Football the other day, um, and Chevrolet has a brand new commercial out for EV cars. So the images that were used um, in this particular commercial, they were uh, they covered both race and gender very well, but in this commercial, they actually included a lot of older adults, which they're usually left out. And the tagline was EV cars for everybody everywhere. So the reason that this commercial is ageless is because the images were intergenerational. The experience of singing in the car is an experience that all generations have and enjoy, and it expressed the shared value of fun and happiness. And the words that were used and shown in the commercial, everybody everywhere, were inclusive. Another example um, is the uh, marketing campaign that I typically see when I fly American. Um, and this one is by Marriott and there is their, their travel makes us campaign. And again, this particular commercial taps into the core values such as time with family, happiness and a love of travel. And the marketing ads include intergenerational images and the language is inclusive. So it's age blind and value based. So if you're interested in learning more, um, there are a couple of resources. Um, there's the best practices for communication available um, by the Reframing Aging Project. And there's actually been a National Reframing Institute established earlier this year. You could also check your own implicit bias and that of your team um, through this project implicit quiz that's available on the Harvard website. And we'll include it in um, the description and the blog that goes with this podcast. So thank you for joining me today. Um, I hope that you have found these tips and strategies for marketing to adult sporting and over to be helpful. If you're interested in learning more or having a deeper conversation with me, with your marketing teams, I also do corporate consulting with marketing organizations and I've worked with Marriott International, Apple, NASDAQ, and others in the past. So feel free to email me at melissabphd at gmail.com and we can explore how we might be able to work together in the future. Thank you for tuning in to This Is Getting Old, Moving Towards an Age-Friendly World. I'm your host, Melissa Batchelor, and if you'd like to learn more, you can check out my other episodes on my YouTube channel by either by subscribing and ringing the bell to get immediate notifications when new content comes out. In addition, you can also find the audio version of the podcast on Amazon Music, Spotify, iTunes, and Stitcher. Please feel free to leave an honest review because more reviews mean more awareness of the podcast and helps us move towards an age-friendly world. If you have a comment or a question, you can visit my website, melissabphd.com. Go to the Contact Melissa tab, and you can leave me a voice message. You never know. It might just include your question or your comment in an upcoming episode.